This fits on top of a leaf vac slash blower. There's a big tube that connects to a motor. The motor creates a vacuum, sucks up all the leaves and the debris, and then it pushes it out through this discharge chute. It comes out the end of this, it's a pretty good size, and then this goes inside a big container like a hopper. At the front of the trailer, there's an aluminum bulkhead. The problem is that the height of this is too high to line up to the hole that's currently on the trailer. So we've got to cut this flange off. The reason I'm not making a new flange is because I don't want to have to re-punch any of these holes and make them square. That's how much we got to take out right there. That is our scrap. The hardest part for me on any project is coming up with the way overall that I want to do the project. You know, how am I going to mark it out? How am I going to lay it out? How am I going to cut it? As with this piece, it's got a bunch of different curves. I'm trying a bunch of different things, and here I'm actually using a straight edge and a scribe to try to get a nice straight line. Initially, when I looked at this project, I was hoping that my portable bandsaw, the throat, would be wide enough to, to cut this, but it just it wasn't. And I don't own a horizontal bandsaw, but that would have been really ideal for this. You could also use a grinder with a cutoff wheel, but I really don't like using a cutoff wheel in the shop if I can help it, just because they create so much dust. A reciprocating saw would have worked for this, but this circular saw, I find I use this thing more and more every single time. It's like 125 bucks. This came as a kit for a track saw. It comes with like three feet of track in this saw for 120 bucks, and I use it all the time. Now here, I couldn't get the circular saw in there, so I actually had to use a grinder. There's just too much of an angle, so I didn't have the clearance to use the circular saw. It's definitely not something that I would recommend for someone just starting out. Experience teaches you how to handle the unexpected, like kickback or blade drift. But when you're new, those surprises can be dangerous. It takes time to develop the muscle memory and the instincts to make micro adjustments on the fly. So if you're building your skills, take it slow. Follow the safety rules and get comfortable with the basics and work your way up. Power tools are unforgiving and confidence without experience can get you hurt. Precision and control come with time and there's no shortcut to that. So this will go on just like that. Throughout this video, you'll see me checking the flanges repeatedly to make sure they're square to one another. I know it might seem like I'm doing this a lot, but the reason I'm so focused on it is simple. Taking the time to ensure everything is properly squared now will save me a lot of trouble later. If I didn't check it and something would have warped, it would force me to cut everything apart and redo the work. I talked about this earlier, wrapping your corners prevents things from cracking. So that's why I make sure to wrap the corners, because if it's going to crack, it's going to crack in a corner.